Thank you for joining us. It is Wednesday, the 30th day of November 2011. This is InfoWars Nightly News. I am your host and narrator, Alex Jones. I want to thank you all for watching. I want to thank you all for subscribing to InfoWarsNews.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. Truly the front lines in the information war. Truly the front lines of teleprompter-free, globalist propaganda-free news and information. Our goal is liberty and freedom and empowering the human species to greater forms of security and freedom and everything that is good and wholesome. Basically, we're diametrically opposed to the eugenicist who hate humanity and are a collection of psychopathic control freaks who uh, compete with each other uh, to engage in greater crimes and sins against humanity. We did an incredible interview earlier today with Stuart Rhodes, the founder of Oath Keepers, constitutional law scholar from Yale, award-winning researcher who wrote a 2004 paper dealing uh, with uh, martial law scenarios and enemy combatant status for the American people. And it's become prescient uh, in light of the new National Defense Authorization uh, Act that the media again ran another hoax. First they said that it didn't affect citizens and they admitted it did. Secret arrest, disappear into a black hole. No judge, no jury, no proof. Citizens now being killed by the military. Military to operate openly in America. They've been eating around the edges of that for a while, but now it's here. But, but really, you should see this as, as a declaration of war against the American people. That's how we should see it. We need to stop this right now. If we don't, Alex, I do believe that there'll be no recourse except another revolution. Otherwise, we are going to be lost. We will be put in the same position as the founding fathers were in 1775. They have, been, they have taken off the mask and told us, I mean, they can do it to your kids. There's no age limitation in this bill. They could take your children away and take them to Guantanamo. The media then said last night it had passed. And this morning, I'm like, well, it's passed. I should have not believed them. As it turns out, it hasn't passed. It's passed out of committee. It's passed and not had amendments to strip the police state provisions out. But it's not done yet. And even if they implement this, uh, you know, that is the passage of the bill, they still have to actually carry out the full implementation uh, which will only serve to wake up the people that much more. So Stuart Rhodes is coming up, and then also we're going to have a financial expert on to break down what's happening in the economy uh, after that. Ted Anderson and his maiden voyage here at InfoWars Nightly News. That said, um, Rand Paul uh, came out. The video's up at InfoWars.com, an article we did on it. And pointed out that Americans could be sent to Gitmo under indefinite detention. And he went on to say that, uh, how are the American people going to like seeing military checkpoints in America, uh, in America? He says, I wonder how Americans will feel when they see troops in the streets on a regular basis, something no one now living has seen since it ended the last time in 1876. And it was illegal before that, but during Reconstruction after the Civil War, uh, it, it was still carried out, so they had to pass another law saying you will not, you will not do this. Third world countries have troops in the streets. North Korea has troops in the streets. Mexico, this is not what a free society has. But even in Mexico, on the books, they can't detain you for life with no trial. Uh, North Korea at least has a kangaroo trial. I mean, this is beyond North Korea. Beyond North Korea. I mean, Mexico is like a wonderland of freedom compared to North Korea. Could it be that soon America will be less free than Mexico or even North Korea? If we let these tyrants do it, yes, that is the case. Now, I want to shift gears into torture. If you think that's bad enough, first they tried under John Yoo and Alberto Gonzalez, uh, under George W. Bush, to say that buried alive, pulling fingernails out, beating people's children in front of them, John Yoo wrote in the memos, and it made national news that they could crush a child's testicles. Crush a child's testicles in front of their parents to make them answer questions and that's not torture. Waterboarding, any of it, it's all wonderful. It's, it's what George Washington was all into. Hey, the North Vietnamese, when they tortured our troops, they weren't so bad. Joseph Mengele, the Nazis, they weren't so bad. You know, why are all the bad guys in movies, you, you know, doing this? We're going to go back to this history of it here and replay that in a minute. I'm going to narrate what you just saw on screen for a second. But uh, 
you know, here's the quote by the ACLU, a mental Eastern dictatorship has more democratic accountability for abuse of power, including torture, than the U.S. under Obama. And uh, now the ACLU and 30 other organizations, including Ron Paul, have sent a letter to the Senate asking them to oppose an effort in Congress that threatens to revive the use of torture and other inhumane interrogation techniques, which give you false confessions and are the hallmark of a fallen police state society. And, of course, Rand Paul is also uh, fighting that as well. But now they're not even denying that they are involved in torture. Now they're going, okay, we are torturing and we want to legalize it. So it, it's uh, quite a descent into tyranny. Now, going back to that uh, group of historical graphics, how many times do I have to say it? We're told bad guys torture. The globalists put out these fake Al-Qaeda torture manuals to demonize Al-Qaeda. They got caught putting it out. But then everything that they show happening to Al-Qaeda is actually what our criminal government has been doing, including raping children at Abu Ghraib in front of their parents. That came out in the Army report. And all these so-called good old boys that watch 24 and all these shows where they glamorize it, you are literally being taught to be a psychopathic control freak and to accept torture that's so sexy and powerful and freedom-oriented so it can be used against you. This is a psychological programming to desensitize you, and all of it ties together, and it is wrong. Now, we'll talk more with Stuart Rhodes coming up on this uh, this evening, but clearly when government starts saying it's going to secretly arrest you, and this is the most important thing I'm going to say tonight, so please listen to me. And I've already done the interview with Rhodes. It's incredibly powerful. But I want to be clear here. We're at the crossroads. We're at the decision point deciding what side you're on. When government is saying it will secretly arrest you, kill you, torture you, whatever it wants with you, for no reason, that is a Hitler, a Stalin, a Mao. Okay? I mean, it's happening here. If they can get away with this, they can get away with anything. And you notice they're getting away with it, taking private accounts, robbing people, corrupt energy deals, fast and furious, and they're trying to threaten us with torture. They're trying to scare us. Now they claim they're doing it because of Al-Qaeda, but Al-Qaeda publicly works for the very same banksters and has been given control of North Africa, now being sent into Syria. And a lot of people are going to say, hey, we need to go up physically against this corrupt, illegitimate government. And certainly they've committed more crimes than the Redcoats ever did before our forebearers, who FEMA teaches police are terrorists, fought back against it. This idea that government can just do anything to you, that's like saying a black slave can have their feet chopped off because a white owner feels like it. No, in the universe, that person's not a slave. It's a crime to make them a slave. It's a crime to cut their fingers or toes off because they try to run away. Okay, it is a very simple issue. And right over here on the screen, I have an image from the Passion of the Christ, which is very historically accurate, of Christ after the cat or nine tails, before he had the crown of thorns before he was hauled up. This is what torture is all about. And every authoritarian, corrupt society glamor glamorizes torture, glamorizes violence, and that's the road that we have gone on. And so I understand that a lot of people are going to say we need to have a conflict with these people. But this is a psyop. If you look at what Gandhi did, he sat there and took the abuse, but spoke out against it and illustrated that it was a fraud, and they were able to defeat the British Empire. There's more than one way to skin a cat, basically. And long before we talk about physical confrontation, we need to discuss what have you done politically? How, you know, how many uh, websites have you put up in public? You know, how many globalist propaganda uh, events have you disrupted? How many live TV appearances have you crashed? Uh, how many city council meetings or legislatures have you gone to? How many highway banner hangs have you done? The power of one person in a city tagging political websites on things is incredible. Just the symbol of V against this occupation spreading everywhere is important. Now, as Alexander Solzhenitsyn said, when the secret police start coming to arrest you and take you off to a FEMA camp and rape and kill your family, you defensively have a, not just a right, a duty to fight against it. 
It's just that, yes, very trying times are coming. We're going into a total collapse depression. It's all engineered. They've got paramilitary forces spoiling for a fight. They're going to stage terror attacks to blame it on the American people. We have got to be wise and understand this and work harder than ever while we still have an Internet that's free to some extent and systems to reach out to folks because America is awakening. Congress has a 9% approval rating. The criminals have just dispensed with any pretext of covering up their activity. They're like, oh, you're aware that we're criminals? Well, good, we'll just flaunt it. They're trying to hide it in plain view and just acclimate everybody. All of you have to be the leaders you are now and get the word out in local newsletters, talk your own local radio show, Access TV, YouTube videos, large, small, get the word out about what's happening. The globalists know the power of the people, so first they lie and say, the citizens aren't in these horrible bills. Then they say, okay, the bill's already passed and fooled people and fooled me for a few hours. They, they try all sorts of tricks, but their tricks are running out and people are getting wise to them. Okay? All I'm saying is the globalists stage events and want violence for a reason. They think that's a ball game they can win early on. They know they're running out of time with us peacefully exposing them. Every day we continue to get the word out, we are reaching millions of more people. And I, I like the, the analogy Stuart's going to use later of what happened in 89 with East Germany. People tried to climb over the wall, the military would just shoot them. Finally, one day, the military just stood down and wouldn't do it anymore. That's what we're hoping for. The main communist leadership didn't know that they had no support, just like Ceausescu in Romania. That's what we want. I have lived long enough, I've been violent enough to know it's not fun, it's not macho, it's not something I'm looking for. If I've got a fight, I will. You better believe it. You better believe it. And once the switch is thrown, ladies and gentlemen, there's no turning back. There's a lot of provocateurs out there that want this. There's also a lot of great people that know the tyranny and who have the courage to go ahead and get ready for physical confrontation. We've got to restrain ourselves. We've got to restrain ourselves, and we've got to do everything we can, as our forebearers did, over 15 years of incredible abuse. In some cases, more intense than what we're seeing right now. Okay, I want to go ahead and get to the rest of the news, but there's a lot we can do now. For those of you, a lot of you, it's a cop-out to talk about, well, we'll just have a revolution. Yeah, we'll just stockpile guns and live in the country, and we'll have a revolution someday. Have the revolution by growing your own garden. Have a revolution by knocking on doors. Have a revolution by going to Access TV in a town 50 miles away if you have to and getting on television or getting your own local radio show. Don't know how? Try it. Make some phone calls. You should go through a lot of effort first. I saw this coming 17, 18 years ago. I took action against it. I saw it coming 1,000 miles away. Now it's five inches away. I put a lot of energy in it. Look what we've done. Look how far the Ron Paul movement's come. We've got to work now. I'm pleading with you. You've got to do everything you can now to wake up as many people as you can. And then if it goes violent, we've got a lot better chance of nipping these guys in the bud quickly, having the government people that are mid-level turn against them. In fact, I was going to get to this later, but here's an article. Well, I'm not going to make them skip ahead. I'm going to get to it in a second. It, it just ties into this. Ron Paul has the majority of military support. He has the majority of government support. And, and Bloomberg says, give this guy money and then he'll fire you is the name of the article. I'm going to cover it in a moment. But they're saying the government employees are idiots. No, they're not. They're in the inside. They know the truth. They know Ron Paul's right. And they know there's not going to be any government soon if we totally collapse. This is unsustainable. But they skew it. He has the most military and most government donations because they know what's going on. And Bloomberg Business Week attacks them over this. So we have a lot of friends in corporate America, in government, across the board, who are quietly working to hold this back. Okay? I mean, it's not going to hurt the New World Order if we have uh, some idiotic shooting war uh, with the government. I mean, I mean, a bunch of a bunch of you know, so you know, phony, tough, and crazy, brave people. That's not going to hurt the New World Order. Getting rid of the Federal Reserve, arresting these head bankers who publicly committed crimes—that's going to do it. Look at this headline: Write a check to elect this man so he can fire you. And it goes to the fact that uh, Ron Paul's getting the most donations from military and government. That's because they know. 
They know there's no future if you don't turn this around. Okay, that's coming up a little bit more uh, here. This is going to be a three-hour show if I don't shut up. There's so much coming up. Uh, but uh, shifting gears into other news now, Obama admin seals records on murdered Border Patrol agent implicated in Fast and Furious. They've already been caught shipping drugs in, shipping guns out. I mean, this is a mafia. This is Chicago mafia. The Chicago uh, Mercantile now is saying, yeah, we'll let MF Global take people's private accounts. I, I mean, uh, people keep getting shocked. Thomas Jefferson said, you will live under whatever level of tyranny you put up with. There's always going to be crooks that want to rob you and scam you if you let them. I mean, of course. I mean, if you go out in the middle of a wolf-infested uh, Montana and tie yourself to a tree and slice yourself open, wolves are going to come and eat you. I mean, uh, you roll over and say, eat my guts. Here, I'm a prey animal. They're going to come. And look at Chicago. Look at New York where the mafia runs everything. There's a total gun ban on the general citizens because they're crooks. Crooks want disarmed prey. What's the first thing a bank robber does? He says, put your hands up, and they make the security guard give them their gun. Criminal government takes over. First thing they say is, turn the guns in right here. He ain't going to take care of you. All right. Continuing here. Uh, again, here's that article I just mentioned. Write a check to elect Ron Paul so he can fire you. Among GOP presidential hopefuls, the Texas Libertarian leads in donations from federal employees. And, of course, it's skewed because he, he gets 70-plus percent of the military donations. And, 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 and that's, that's in the numbers, but they don't really mention that. But again, that's the good news. That scares the globalists. The military likes Ron Paul. A guy that says, end all these wars, bring the troops home. Oh, but you're always told the troops want the war. It's like, support our troops. They want the war to continue. And they put a few PSYOP guys on TV for you. So they're totally freaking out uh, over that. Uh, continuing here, Bloomberg also reports six central banks led by uh, Fed cut dollar funding costs to ease debt crisis. This is a, that's pretty funny, Marcos. Uh, this is the Federal Reserve, I guess, pissing our money away. And it says six central banks led by the Federal Reserve made it cheaper for banks to borrow dollars in emergencies in a global effort to ease Europe's sovereign debt crisis. So it was already basically at zero percent. So as Max Kaiser pointed out now, now, I guess, uh, you know, for mid-sized banks, it's at 0 0.1, but for others, it's, it's, it's negative. They just give you money, and then they loan it out at 10, 15, 20 percent. So it's, it's free money. And, of course, we have to then basically uh, back all of that. And it overall devalues the dollar. Continuing with crooks here, Hank Paulson, the guy that got a White House waiver and when his own waiver didn't hold up, gave himself hundreds of millions of dollars, uh, literally burning the value of our dollar there. Uh, now it's turned out that he gave hedge fund inside information on Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae uh, when he was Treasury Secretary. We'll talk to Ted Anderson about this coming up later. Just incredible insider trading. But when the top leaders of Congress got caught, actually insider trading inside the Capitol, totally legal, they said, well, we're above the law. And if you don't like that, we'll have the Army arrest you. I mean, they're like, ha, ha, we're crooks. Have the Army arrest them. That's what third world countries do. A president, it always happens. It's caught stealing some money. Venezuela, Nicaragua, wherever it is, you see it all the time. They just say, I'm calling out the military. And sometimes the military says, I'm going to be the president. That's all we've come to here. And, that, and that, that's what they're getting ready for. America hadn't been perfect, but it's been successful because it had the lowest level of corruption. Still wild and rampant, but compared to other countries, it was low. Mainly because the average American, if you tried to steal from them, would kill you. Not the case anymore. That's why we're so enslaved. Oh, yeah, you think they'd all be slaves down in Mexico to the El Jefes if they had a history of a Second Amendment? No. Again, the answer is arm the general public and liberty will abound. Thomas Jefferson. Okay, continuing here. We learned about the 16-plus trill the Federal Reserve gave their buddies in the last few years. Uh, now, uh, Forbes reports, we didn't know about the Fed's 7.7 .7 trillion. Uh, that they uh, gave others, uh, including $1.2 trillion in a single day. Isn't that just special? <clears throat> now, speaking of torture, you know how many TSA agents, it's in the thousands now, have been arrested raping pedophilia, stealing money, raping people in car garages in uniform, uh, planting drugs on people, stealing money from people. I mean, who else wants a job sitting in microwave ovens all day and grabbing people's genitals? I mean, you, you, 
either you're an idiot desperate for a job or you're a pervert. And now they've got inside whistleblowers coming out. Uh, the courthouse news is reporting as well as prisonplanet.com. Uh, and uh, that, the, 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 you know, they try to tell other federal agencies that are charged with investigating this and they get um, suspended. This is the new brown shirt group that's going to be turned out on the streets of America. They already are. So they've, they've got to be a group of, of, of real saucy pervs and people. So they've got to be protected. They've got to get the idea that they're invincible, that it's their, uh, what was I told? Their administrative privilege to rape a woman in a parking garage. Okay? And if you don't like it, the army standing by to disappear you. Worked in communist Russia, why not here? NKVD over America. Uh, continuing, a foreclosure fraud whistleblower uh, who was uh, basically ordered by her superiors uh, reportedly to sign uh, thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of false documents, has been found dead. And they're not sure... We're not sure they say suicide or natural causes. Certainly she wasn't killed. <laughs> sure. Uh, continuing, um, movers and deputies refused to evict a 103-year-old woman. We have an audio clip on that coming up in a minute. But you know the issue is with a lot of these houses, the people aren't even uh, upside down in them, or the banks actually don't even own the house. We don't know the particulars in this case, but... You know, they're talking about bulldozing hundreds of thousands of houses around the country rather than letting people stay in them. And uh, you know, what are you going to do, throw her on the street and say, oh, she's lazy and homeless, just let her die? Let's go ahead and play that uh, news clip where the sheriff's deputies refused to do it. And and Fulton County Sheriff deputies and movers showed up today after Deutsche Bank planned to kick the family out. The moving company and the deputies took one look at Ms. Lee and decided this would not happen today. Isn't that just special? Uh, the, what, will they give her a week or two to find some place to go and the rest of the family? But the point is, at least they showed some humanity. A lot of times when people even argue or whatever, they'll just taser an old person. But, but that's basic human activity being shown by those police. And they better show it because they're going to end up in the same position. I mean, this country is to, is to be fully financially broken, so we all become dependent on government. That's the globalist admitted plan. And cops, military, citizens... Lawyers, doctors, video editors, talk show hosts, we're all in the same boat. Preachers, imams, rabbis, produce people, farmers, auto mechanics, defense contractors, we're all in the same, same boat together. Now, here's another article out of Press TV. Queen to deduct wages if workers strike. Queen Elizabeth uh, II has threatened staff at Buckingham Palace that she will deduct the wages of staff who join the nationwide strike action. This is a woman who gets billions in uh, uh, government subsidies every few years, and who, who, who while the, last year while they were kicking old people off during the freezing winter off their gas ration, one of the coldest winters in, since 1643, was it? Uh, that she was getting millions of pounds a year with her hundreds of different palaces, complexes. She has over 100 palaces, and some of them have thousands of total rooms. You know, dozens of buildings per facility, that she was getting welfare gas to, to heat it all, while the old people, it was reported, were getting on buses and riding around all night just to stay warm. <laughs> when it was sub-zero, 20, 30 below zero. I mean, this is the type of scum these parasites are. They're not even English. They're not even British. I mean, that, that, that's another thing. I mean, it, it's incredible. They're from Transylvania. You can't make this stuff up. Uh, continuing here, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Occupy Montreal protesters branded by police. And I've got a bunch of other reports. Kevin Booth called me today. He's going to get some footage of it in L.A. They're taking people to the Dodgers stadium, and the feds and Homeland Security are running arrest all over the country and beating people on the heads and everything. Uh, just, just absolutely incredible. They tried to co-opt Occupy. They couldn't. So now Obama is orchestrating all of this. Absolutely incredible. Okay, we're going to... We're going to go ahead and uh, go to the next piece of information now. Stay with us. With more on these incredibly dangerous developments, we're going to go to Stuart Rhodes. He's a constitutional uh, lawyer uh, who uh, won awards at Yale for his reports and papers on 
the belligerent act and the whole enemy combatant uh, question. In fact, the paper was uh, titled Solving the Puzzle of Enemy Combatant Status back in 2004. Uh, he also, of course, worked in Congress for Ron Paul, and he's the founder of Oath Keepers. He's an Army paratrooper veteran uh, himself. And again, I saw mainstream articles last night and this morning saying that the bill passed, the amendment passed, and, and I rarely get caught up in something, but, but then later I learned it didn't pass. It was just that it's passed out of committee and that they're trying to bring cloture uh, so there can't be a debate on it or a filibuster. We're going to get Stuart to talk about that. And the amendment failed. The amendment failed. But uh, this is just incredible. And if it goes through the Senate, then I guess it'll go on to the president who claims he's going to veto it. But the president's already declared the power to kill American citizens, as they've already done with the Lockheed in that staged event to set the precedent. Uh, they've already said they can secretly arrest people uh, and detain them. He said last year, I don't need this legislation. I'll do it through the executive. So it's a lot of a lot of politicking to, to manipulate the public. As one congressman, Amash, said, this is carefully crafted to mislead the public. A week ago, they would say, oh, this doesn't affect citizens, because one provision says that. But then the other provision says, but it does if we say so, basically. Now, an expert, I mean, you couldn't think of a better one, military guy, uh, constitutional law scholar, you know, won awards for his research on this, um, worked for Ron Paul, knows Congress, knows all the Byzantine uh, things that are going on. Stuart Rhodes can break this down for us. Uh, but there's the latest article, indefinite detention bill set for final vote Thursday. Senate moves to limit debate on unconstitutional legislation. Uh, that's up on uh, Infowars.com, the latest uh, there. But again, last night I heard it passed, got up this morning, read articles, said it passed. That's the mainstream media. I've got to learn to just believe nothing they say. It, it's so incredible. I remember four years ago when NATO attacked the Russian held area of South Ossetia and Abkhazia. For two hours, I was reporting, well, the Russians attacked it. Can't believe they did because CNN was saying it. Turned out it was NATO attacked. I mean, I mean it, it's just. The, even I get caught up in their lies. I mean, it's incredible. It's incredible. Uh, Stuart Rhodes, great to have you here with us, my friend. Thank you, Alex, very much. Okay, so, so, so you wrote the papers on this. You've been an expert on this. You pointed out before we went live here, the, the Belligerent Act is, is, is really McCain's you, you know, real holy grail, where if you're just belligerent, you disappear into a black hole. So now they're trying to get it piecemeal. Break this down. Well, yeah, in the 2010 Belligerence Act, Belligerent Detention Act, he, uh, he wanted the language to read that if you, you know, commit an act of belligerence in warfare or any other act of terrorism against the United States, then you could be, if you were just accused of that by someone in the executive branch, you'd be whisked away into military detention, no grand jury indictment, no trial in front of a jury of your peers, just taken off to Guantanamo. He didn't quite get what he wanted, but what he's doing here is getting what he can. He's attaching this, making this part of the defense appropriations bill, which no one wants to vote against, or they're just, you know, described as being against the troops. And he talked to a, a, a Democrat, Levin, into proposing it. But really, it's it's McCain's baby, and this is getting him getting what he can. What he what he what he's going to get out of this bill if it passes is uh, Section 1031. The first part of it is does apply to U.S. citizens because it says that any person, a covered person under this action, this section is any person who is accused of participating in 9-11 or aiding those who did it, or is accused of being part of Al-Qaeda or an allied group or supporting one of those organizations. And mere, the mere accusation alone by the, by the executive branch or someone in the Department of Defense would place you under military jurisdiction and, and, and then give the, the president the option of detaining you indefinitely, sending you off to Guantanamo. Um, it, it expressly states that a person who is under that first section can be one, detained in the laws of war without trial until the end of the hostilities authorized by the authorization for use of military force. And the wars never end. We're always under right. an endless emergency. And those, before you continue, that say, oh, well, let us get tough. Why even have America then? Because America is about due process and is about checks and balances. So you can't stage things. So people get a day in court. I mean, you know, this idea that, that, that due process is bad, all these people that say that, well, they should just move to another country. If they don't like due process, they should move to North Korea. Yeah, if you don't want to live under the Bill of Rights that, and Article 3 of the Treason Clause, which is what this directly violates, then please do move, move to North Korea or China. 
Um, so it states you can be detained indefinitely for the duration of the war on terror, which is could be forever, or number two, a trial under Chapter 47A of Title 10 U.S. Code, which is the UCMJ, as amended by the Military Commissions Act. And what that means is military com military tribunal, military commission. And it also has a section, Section 1036. Some people say, well, you know, you get a, you get a, a right to challenge your determination. Well, it mandates in Section 1036 that if you challenge your determination, it will be a military judge that shall preside at proceedings for the determination of status of an unprivileged enemy belligerent. And it also states that you will get, if you want one, a military lawyer, not a civilian lawyer, only a military lawyer. So the point is, is that is they're treating you, the American people, precisely the same as if you were an Iraqi or someone in Afghanistan in an occupied country. They're going to come into your house. Once they decided that you're a bad guy, they will, or just, just that they didn't want to call you a bad guy, say they don't like Alex Jones a speech. And so they designate him an enemy combatant and accuse him of aiding al-Qaeda in some way. That Before you get a trial, before anything else happens, they come to your door, middle of the night, kick your door in, guys in, in black body armor come in, put a machine gun to your face and your children, and whisk you away to Guantanamo. Well, wait, 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 Stuart, it's worse than that, though. Because we already have the MIAC and Homeland Security reports. We got a new one yesterday where the feds are telling all local police that State Rep. Charles Key in Oklahoma, a great guy, and the victims' families of Oklahoma City who are investigating uh, what happened there, they are listed as domestic terrorists. Actually, it says domestic terrorism section. It lists them and even mainline libertarian websites. We've already seen Ron Paul having American right. flags. So the point is, they're already teaching the police and military this. They're already saying the returning veteran's the number one enemy. You know, they, they sell it on its Al-Qaeda. Oh, I know, of course, but the point is, is like I said, he couldn't get what he really wants. He wants that wide open definition that includes or other ter acts of terrorism. But what he can get, and what he's getting so far, the Udall Amendment yesterday to strike this provision w was defeated. What he's getting so far is a definition that's supposedly narrow that, that only applies to Al-Qaeda or those affiliated. And The same Al-Qaeda they've put in control of, of, of um, areas like North Africa and Libya and are moving over to Syria. I mean, this all rings hollow when it turns out the globalists are running Al-Qaeda. What they're going to do, Alex, is what they'll do is they'll pass this bill like it, like it reads now, and then later on, say the next appropriations bill for the Defense Department next year, they'll insert a very vanilla amendment that says, insert at the end of this section, or other acts of terrorism. And there you go. It'll be a wide open um, sweeping in of anybody accused of any act of terrorism. But even right now, all they have to do, is, this is the point, you won't get a jury trial. You won't get a grand jury indictment. They can just accuse you of aiding al-Qaeda through some means, through some nefarious means, and then whisk you away to Guantanamo. And when you want to challenge it, it'll be a military judge, handpicked by Obama, who will determine whether or not you are justified in being held. It won't be a jury. You're, but you're what done. about you're the sections the dealing with using the military domestically? We know for decades they've been trying to do this, and we see Marines running checkpoints in California and Alabama and Army checkpoints in Tennessee, TSA now at checkpoints around the country. I mean, they're already doing this, and they're already killing U.S. citizens uh, abroad. Well, that's the other part of it. That's the other part of it, is that the backdrop to this is that the Supreme Court in 2004, in the Hamdi decision, gutted the Bill of Rights. They, it's, it's, this, it's a horrible decision. I don't know why liberals keep saying it's some kind of victory for the Bill of Rights. It was nothing of the sort. I mean, even Judge Napolitano got it wrong last night in his, in his interview with Rand Paul. You know, God bless him, but he missed it on this one. In the Hamdi case, the O'Connor, Justice O'Connor, for the majority, made some flowery speech about how the power of the executive branch is not limited, but she went ahead and also said there's nothing in the Constitution that prevents the U.S. government from attaining one of its own citizens as an unlawful combatant. And then she said, but they have a right to challenge their determination, and they have the right to counsel. And in that decision, the, the only thing the liberals were arguing against back then was that Congress had not given an authorization. Well, the Supreme Court ruled in the Hamdi case that Congress had given authorization in the 2001 author, authorization for use of military force, which even Ron Paul voted for. But he didn't realize they were going to use that to justify military detention. So what they've done is they've, they've opened the door to the international laws of war being applied to the American people. And yes, 
Yes, as I said in my paper back in 2004, if you can detain somebody under the laws of war, under the laws of war, what else can you do with, a, with an enemy combatant? You can also just kill them on sight, which is what Obama has started to do. It's all about the laws of war. The NSA spying on the American people was defended by the Bush administration as being under his powers as commander-in-chief to surveil the battlefield. Obama now claims the power to go ahead and just kill you. It's all very consistent with what can be done to a foreign enemy in wartime. Well, that was my but next point, is that if you go back to the Military Commission Act and all of that, I remember at the time covering it and having you and others on, you know, it says citizens are exempt unless the Defense Department or, or people they designate say that you're a combatant and now you're basically extrajudicially stripped of the rights of a citizen. So it's, it's all these games and they say it over and over again, but what about the overall PSYOP last week and this week of saying it doesn't affect citizens even when Lindsey Graham and even when John McCain admitted it did, we see that classic military PSYOP of trying to make the debate about whether it did this or not instead of debating is this a good idea. Well, that's section uh, 1032, and there have been some folks, even a, an article in the American Thinker that misread that. 1032 requires military custody, but then for certain people, but then exempts from that requirement U.S. citizens or lawful residents for actions that are committed here. What that means is that the president must detain someone in military custody if they meet the criteria except unless they're U.S. citizens or lawful residents. And in that case, he's under Section 1031, he has discretion. So all it really means is that he must detain some people, but when it comes to U.S. citizens and lawful residents, he can do what he wants. He can he can try them by by a, a jury trial for criminal, for criminal statutes under federal law, or he can put them in military custody. Uh, it does not say that, that the military trial provisions or the military detention provisions cannot apply to him. American citizens. It just says that he has discretion. And this is something that the that I believe it was the other other senator you mentioned earlier who got it right. He said, look, all it does is lead up to the president. And the president likes that. He is not opposing this detention policy. He's simply opposing that one section 10. And then by the way, all the presidents do. I mean, you're a you know, Yale constitutional award-winning lawyer. You know more about this than I do, but watching and studying it, the president then just lets the Secretary of Defense and then his designates do whatever you want. So people think, oh, well, this is special things just with the president. But the way I've right. seen this done in the past, the president then just designates it and creates his own military Praetorian secret police like the SS. That's correct. In this, this actual uh, document itself calls for the establishment by the Depart Secretary of Defense uh, may in, 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 in consultation with Secretary of State and the Director of National Intelligence. You know, they, they set up their own system for determinations, and it won't be done by, by the President. Like under Bush, uh, Padilla's, Padilla's and, and, and Hamdi, both of them U.S. citizens, were, were designated uh, unlawful combatants by flunkies in the DOD, lower bureaucrats, not by President Bush himself. So you're correct. Incredible. Uh, now, what about this new bill? Have you seen this new one? I've got an article here. Authorizing torture. Uh, now they're not even denying that it's torture. They're just saying, yes, we're going to torture. And it goes on to say the same Senate which uh, today uh, move forward with a bill uh, allowing indefinite detention of American citizens on American soil for suspicion of being terrorist is now considering a bill to repeal the prohibitions against torture. The ACLU and another 30 organizations sent a letter to the Senate asking them to oppose an effort in Congress that threatens to revive the use of torture and other inhumane interrogation techniques. I mean, the Nazis, Stuart, as you know, didn't put stuff on paper. I mean, as a constitutional lawyer, as a veteran, but this is a guy searching history, why is it a bad idea to have torture? That's like asking, why is it wrong for Mr. Sandusky to rape children? I mean, you know, well, why is it wrong to put children in barbecue pits? But, I mean, why is it wrong to have a government that secretly arrests people and has dungeons and tortures people? You know, why is it wrong to put babies in deep fryers? Well, I mean, the founders, first of all, as a matter of constitutional law, the founders put the Bill of Rights in place and also the treason clause of Article 3 in particular to stop 
torture, to stop compel confessions. That's how they got a compel confession out of you in the Star Chamber in English history. They tortured you, forced you to confess, and then they executed you for treason against the king. The founders knew that history. They also experienced, you go read the Declaration of Independence, it talks there very clearly about the cause of taking up arms. One of them is denial of jury trial. One of them is the um, application of a jurisdiction foreign to their constitution against them. Another one is, which, which would be military tribunal. Another one is the, the, the application of military law to the colonists, whisking them way overseas. This Quartering of troops, thing. and they've already militarized our police. I mean, that's military right there. That's an end run around posse comitatus. I mean, the, the whole Bill of Rights, the, the Fourth, Fifth, Sixth Amendments, and, and the Eighth Amendment also, um, in particular, were designed to stop exactly this. Arbitrary detention, denial of jury trial, being whisked away into military custody, the military being made superior to the civilian power, the denial of, of the right to jury trial, which is mandated in Article Three of the Treason Clause that tells you very plainly what must be done with an American who wages war against his own country or aids the enemy. And Scalia got this right in his dissent in Hamdi. He said, look, the Treason Clause is plain. It's right there. It tells you, you must try them in, in a court, in a, in a civilian court, in front of a jury of their peers in a public trial. And if they're Not a traitor, they're, they're going to get executed. But, but I mean, here's what's so amazing. Right. And that's the whole point. That's, that's the whole point of that, is they knew that secret evidence and torture would be used. That's why they insisted on a, a civilian trial in an open court with two witnesses to the overt act. Absolutely. Not one you know, informant or something lying. Now we have secret informant testimony. I mean, and now you can't face your accusers. How much of our constitutional system has been completely overthrown? I mean, as a layman looking at this, it looks about like 80% has pretty much just been blown to bits. Well, if they pass this bill, it'll be pretty much our enabling act. I mean, the only, th only thing left would be for John McCain to do an amendment that says, or any other action that's considered terrorism by the U.S. government. But really, you should see this as, as a declaration of war against the American people. That's how we should see it. We need to stop this right now. If we don't, Alex, I do believe that there'll be no recourse except another revolution. Otherwise, we are going to be lost. We will be put in the same position as the founding fathers were in 1775. They have, been, they have taken off the mask and told us, I mean, they could do it to your kids. There's no age limitation in this bill. They could take your children away and take them to Guantanamo and hold them for, for the duration of the war on terrorism on the mere accusation that they are terrorists. I know it sounds ridiculous, but they could do it. So why do you want to wait until it gets done to you, the American people? They're telling you already what they're going to do. They're declaring war on you. John McCain is a traitor. Every single one of them that votes for this, Lindsey Graham are all traitors. They committed treason against you. And I don't use that term lightly. But they are declaring war and waging war on the American people. And so as far as I'm concerned, if they pass this bill, it's put up or shut up time for the American people. Either you're going to fight another revolution or you're going to be slaves. Well, Stuart, at the beginning of the show tonight, I, 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 I said to the viewers, I said, I'm never somebody that shoots my mouth off about violence. I want to fix things peacefully. I'm into the info war. And I've studied history. Uh, it's, it's engrossing. I'm obsessed with it. And unfortunately, I had to tell viewers at the beginning that people do need to go ahead and prepare for defense because this is a declaration of war against the American people. They've set Northcom up. They've set up the national police force. They've set up the secret police. They've tell us torture's good. They say they'll arrest us for no reason and throw away the key. I mean, these are Hitlerian, Stalinistic declarations. And we would be fools to not listen to them. And, 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 and now they're taking people's private bank accounts. I, I mean, it is as if the gates of tyranny have been opened against us. And, 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 and it's always darkest before the dawn. I hope this gets turned back. But if there was ever any doubt about the drive, the mindset, the, the makeup of Lindsey Graham uh, and, 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 and people like him and, and John McCain, I mean, these are modern day tyrants. I mean, these people really are would-be Kim Jong-ils. And I know you've never talked like this uh, on my show. I've probably interviewed you 20 times. I've seen hundreds of speeches you've given. Uh, and uh, you're just being honest, Stuart. You know, it's not fun as a broadcaster and a talk show host to get up here on air and because uh, I know the danger. And, but, you, but the truth, veritas, is paramount. And uh, they provocateur. They want violence. We don't want it. But 
if they do start disappearing people and stuff, my God, we're just entering an area of the ball game where they want to force a confrontation. I mean, clearly, Stuart, you see, just like the arrogant Redcoats, you know, did 230 something years ago, they're trying to push a confrontation right now. Well, but there, there comes a point, though, as Patrick Henry said, that where you have to realize that the fight's going to come. And if, and if they're telling us what they're going to do, I, I don't see them giving up this power or relenting unless they're forced to. And, and yes, there's a, there's a thin chance we could do it through politics. But look at the vote yesterday on the Udall Amendment, which Rand Paul joined. Um, in, in co-sponsorship of, it was defeated. So the majority of the senators and almost every single Republican except for Rand Paul and a bunch of the Democrats also, a bipartisan assault, the majority of them want this. They think it's totally fine to hold American citizens indefinitely without a trial or try them in a military tribunal and execute them. They think that's great. And so, you know, so far, politics has failed us. And really, I think that once you have this, this act in place and they start to use it, then, you, then you're talking about, you know, having crossed the Rubicon and now you're, you're maybe like 1774. You're on the eve of conflict. That's where you are. And the only real question then is a matter of time and how it's going to go and how do you maintain the moral high ground, which our founding fathers did. And I do urge people to take a very close look at our history. They were pushed again and again and again until they finally had to fight back because they came for their weapons. And that's what's going to happen in this country. If they pass this bill, the next step will be they put all the, all the, the pieces in, in the, uh, the puzzle in place and then they need an excuse or a pretext. If you talked about many times, then there'll be a domestic terrorist attack or something like that will happen and they'll start rounding up people. When they get to that point and it starts to happen, you will have no recourse but to fight. Same place that Solzhenitsyn was in when he talked about how they burned in the camps later lamenting the fact that they waited and they did not fight back. That's where we will be. But we're not Russia. We're not Germany. We're not in, in, in Nazi Germany, good little Germans. There is a sizable per, a portion of the population of this country who are not going to take it and who are going to fight back. Well, Stuart, you're right. And uh, the globalists have miscalculated. I mean, when you see Corazon making 40 to 1 bets with, his, with people's private bank accounts, and this is the main economic advisor to Obama, these are mentally ill people. They've got actuaries, they've got think tanks, they've got s political scientists telling them what moves to make, but they're not gonna be able to carry this out. E e there is at least 30% of the population that when they see others overrun and arrested and then tortured and trotted out all drugged up, could be you, could be me, who are gonna go off. And I, I wanna tell the military and police, the globalists are gonna sit offshore and watch you get chewed up in a fight with the American people. Uh, it's very important that police and military really make a decision now which side they're going to be on. Because this is, a decision, right. this is a decision for all the marbles, their family, their country, everything. The tyrants we have running things, I've studied the different ty tyrannies, is so absolutely wicked and hateful. I mean, it's not some boss hog corruption, Stuart. Uh, your comments on that. No, you're correct. And that is their Achilles heel. And that's why I found it at Oath Keepers. The military, you're right. Choose now whom you shall serve. Either you are, I'm talking to the military out there especially, either you are a son of the Republic and you will defend the Bill of Rights and the Constitution, or you are a traitor to your country and you are nothing but a, but a lowly dog, an obedient dog to the powers that be. Choose now whom you shall serve. Well, you know, that's what's so disgusting about this, Stuart. It's not fun being right. It's not fun that we've been proven correct. Uh, it's very sick. And, and, and the pace it's moving is so quick and so naked now. Uh, undoubtedly, uh, I mean, look at Fast and Furious. They got caught shipping tens of thousands of guns into Mexico. So they had CBS release. Oh, we allowed them to be sold at a few gun shops. Of course, it came out. It was drugs being shipped in the U.S. by the ATF, FBI, DEA, Border Patrol, Coast Guard, you name it, and several other federal agencies. It was tens of thousands of guns, not just shipped out of the country, but to Honduras, Mexico, uh, Illinois, Indiana, Florida, to gangs that were killing other gangs. And you find out our government literally is a mafia at, at the top of drug dealing criminals. And you find out they really did stage Oklahoma City. You find out they really did do all. I mean, people need to understand. I mean, we're not just sitting here demonizing people we don't like. I don't have words, Stuart, for my study to describe just how nasty these people are. 
And, and, and I don't think people understand. It's like, like you said, Solzhenitsyn said, what would have happened if we'd have met the secret police with hatchets and pokers? You know, when they came to grab people, uh, you know, half the city wouldn't have been taken to their camps. The, the organs of the machine would have ground to a halt in days. Uh, I mean, and when you realize the very same mega banks that funded Lenin and Stalin are funding this now, they plan to do all of what they did in the Soviet Union here. They lick their lips and talk about how they plan to exterminate at least 20% of this country. They plan to take our kids and our wives and blow their heads off after they rape them. These are murdering absolute people worse than the Bolsheviks. And I don't say that for effect. These are wanton, bloodthirsty scum, and they have our flag on their shoulders. How do you deal with that? Well, I think the important thing to always go back to is our Constitution and Bill of Rights. I mean, that's that's the truth. That's the on our Declaration of Independence, and that's why they don't teach that in schools. And so I encourage, especially those in the military right now, um, and also law enforcement, go back and read the original documents. Read the causes for taking up arms in your forefathers' revolution. You will see it right there in the Declaration of Independence. It's the same exact thing. It nothing changes. Human nature does not change. It's the same will to power. It's the same. Uh, totalitarian mindset that they faced and they fought. Look at what they wrote in the Bill of Rights to stop this from ever happening again. Look at what McCain and Lieberman and the rest of them want to do, and they want you to be the tool of oppression over your own people. See the truth, and when you see the truth and you understand that your children, your wives, your family are all in danger also, then you need to do what's right. And what's right is, is you must at least refuse, stand down and refuse to be a tool of oppression. But I'll tell you what, if they start using military force against the United States and against the American people domestically, you will have to make an even tougher choice. You will have to fight on the side of the people. You will have to make that choice, just like George Washington did, just like the militia in 1775, who was the military of the United States at the time. They decided, they made the choice, they must fight back against the crown, against the national government. They had no choice. You will have the same obligation. Now, Ron Paul has talked about another possibility. Things may completely financially collapse before this happens, and that might take the steam out of these people. Well, you know, it's interesting. The very first conversation I had with Congressman Paul when I, when I was going to apply for a job with him, he, he was, you know, kind of worn down. This is back in, in 1998. And he said, I, you know, I'm afraid that it's going to take an economic collapse to wake the American people up. And then I expressed the concern that, well, it could lead to more oppression, like the Great Depression did. And so there is that. It, it's, a, it's an open window. Like you said before, it's a, it's a two-way window of opportunity for very you know, horrible, evil things to happen and a destruction of our constitution and destruction of freedom, or it's an open window for us to resurrect it and restore the republic. So when this window opens, and it will, the economic collapse is coming, we need to be ready to make sure that we can push it through towards liberty. We better be prepared for that. But if we're, if we're weak, if we're not morally prepared, spiritually prepared, and, and physically prepared for it, for what's coming, then there's a chance that they could win. Describe so Ron why. Paul back in 1998. I mean, I've been interviewing him since 1996, but I don't know him obviously as well as you did working in his office for years. Now, you describe worn down. I mean, this is a guy that does work 16 to 18 hours a day, totally dedicated. I mean, describe for people out there what he's like behind the scenes. He's the same behind the scenes as he is on camera. He, he's That's him. You know, he's... He's got endurance. Like, I, I can't believe that he's, I mean, I, I, I'm burnt out now. I'm burnt out. Even after just, just two years of doing Oath Keepers, I'm fried. I'm burnt out. And I can't believe he's been going on, going like this for decades. It's amazing. So he just has the endurance of, uh, I think it's because it's his calling. He understands that this is his place in history. And he, I think he believes and has faith that in the end, liberty will triumph. Otherwise, I don't know how he could keep going on. We had people on the staff there who quit and were just so despondent what they saw back in 98. This is, you know, way before the war on terror and this other stuff. But they were already so despondent about the, you know, the, the incredible tide of statism and, and, and government power that they were going up against and corruption. Yeah, it makes me up. cry, Stuart. I got to tell you, I think about what this country's going to go through. It's, it's going to be horrible. Well, we had the... the we have the potential, we still have the potential for it to be like 1989 in Eastern Germany when the wall fell. If there's enough of an awakening in the people, you can reach that tipping point. Well, that's where, what finally happened there was the military refused to shoot the people trying to get out. 
That's right. And, and they all stood down all at once. And without their support, the Communist Party was done. The Stasi were powerless. They all ran and, and hid and, and tore off their, their emblems and tried to hide in the crowds. There's a famous photo done. when my mom was over in Germany a few years ago. She brought me back. Uh, and it was a famous photo of a family running through barbed wire. And well, the little kid is caught on it. And because there's a series of them, and he t takes the little kid and gives it to the parents. And of course, they took that guy and tortured him and killed him. But that's a famous photo of the East German soldier. The people have gotten across, and he goes ahead and gives them the toddler, which seems like just a normal human act, but that was his death sentence. He should have just gone that's ahead right. and climbed on through and gone with them. And, and we have a really good interview on our website with Gunter Spenz, an oathkeeper who was an East German lieutenant colonel back then. And he describes how back in 68, during the Prague Spring, there were some officers who refused orders to, file on, on, to fire on the crowds. They were disappeared. Um, so that was too soon. But by 1989, so many East Germans were sick of communism, including in the military, that that tipping point was reached. And that's what we got to do. We hopefully will have enough time to hit that tipping point of 80%, 85%, 90% of the population who is sick and tired of the illegitimate governments over us, and they will, it'll be like a paper tiger that But collapses. see, with the communists in East Germany, they had one party. Here they've got two that are really the same party, and they have this fake fight. That's how they keep us fighting with each other. How, how right. do you break through that? Well, I think it, once again, you realize like this, like this bill here, it's a, a, whenever you hear the word bipartisan, you should realize what that means is it, it's a bipartisan assault on the Bill of Rights. You know, so they're, they're both doing the same thing. This is, Levin is sponsoring this bill. McCain really, you know, helped him write it, but Levin, the Democrats, sponsoring this bill. So you have both Democrats and Republicans. And then you had Harry Reid to, yesterday move for cloture, which is to, to limit the debate on the bill, which will stifle um, a filibuster. They know what Rand Paul is going to filibuster. So that's the thing, is when you look back at the bailouts, that was overwhelmingly bipartisan. Look at the, the, um, the um, domestic, what's, what's called the, um, the violent radicalization Homegrown Terrorism Prevention Act that was sponsored by Harmon, a Democrat. That was also bipartisan. The Military Commissions Act, same way. Patriot Act, same way. That's how you break through that, is to realize that whenever they decimate the Constitution, it's done through bipartisanship. So that's why, like you said, it's one puppet master with two hands, a left hand and a right hand. They're both being run by the same people. And look, and look, follow the money. Where's the money go? International bankers. That's who's running our government. And My like God, said, they're openly announcing world government now run by mega banks that took over through fraudulent paper and the people that engage in the fraud are the ones being the media says are the are the heroes because they're owned by the same crooks and then when we're proven right we don't get patted on the back it's like how horrible you know uh, it's just incredible and, you know earlier when you were talking about all of this happening and, and everything i literally started to have tears come out of my eyes uh, not even a sobbing way an involuntary because that's your brain giving you endorphins so it's not too painful I mean, that's literally what it is because I realize, my God, America, the only place we've got to live is now an example of evil worldwide, and we're going to go through this. I mean, it's the realization that we're going to have to go into the first few circles of this hell, and then a lot of people we've warned are going to get activated after it's, it's really naked and after they really experience the fruits of tyranny. Uh, but we had it so well here that people don't recognize it as the oxygen's being sucked out of the room. And, and, and just myself having the deep realization, I mean, I mean, it's almost like levels of realization. I know how real this is, but then more and more every day it hits me, it's really real. And yeah. you can, especially if you've read all the histories of this country, but others, but the founders, how they kept having debates and it kept getting more and more real and the abuse got more and more real and, and they went and begged, please stop doing this. And, and the system said, no, we're gonna do more. And, and then it just leads to it. And I guarantee it's gonna be the same way. There are probably over 100 million gun owners in this country. And if one, per, they say it's more like 150 million. If 1% actually fights back, that's a million and a half people. And uh, I mean, there's no way to beat that if it's done in an asymmetrical way. And I'm certainly not dreaming of it going there. It's just that I don't think the minions of this system realize that all their high tech spy gear and all their black uniforms are not going to protect them from an enraged population. But again, I don't want them to be chewed up. I want them to recognize they're working for total criminals. I mean, my God, look at the mega banks that run everything, all the crimes they commit. It's a bunch of Bernie Madoffs. I mean, it's ridiculous. 
Well, that's that's the silver lining for us is that the more ridiculous they get, the more the legitimacy is torn away from them, and rightfully so. And the more they're revealed for what they are, which is fraudulent, unconstitutional, unprincipled, you know, and totally the opposite of the founding fathers. And and that's the whole point. If we can wake up enough police and military to that reality, then we will win because they will not have the tools to do it. And and so that's you know that's what we have to work on. We we can't sit on our butts though and, and rely on that. We got to get ready ourselves. Like you said, you know, to be blunt, we need to prepare for the very worst. And what that will mean is asymmetrical warfare, like our founding fathers in in, in the Southern Campaign had to fight. You know, Francis Marion and the, the Swamp Fox, the Over Mountain Men who defeated the Loyalists at Kings Mountain. All of that is an example of what will have to be done. And and this country will be like Afghanistan. Um, I don't, not saying I'm trying to compare Americans to, to the Taliban or anything like that, but the point is, is you will see a resistance like that. You will see that kind of a hardcore resistance in, in the United States. But it is my hope and prayer that you can avoid doing that by having enough of the military and police side, simply side with what's right. Side with the Constitution, side with the Bill of Rights, side with the Declaration of Independence, and do what's right. If I hear you. That, we win. Let me just ask you this final question. I don't know if you've seen Road to Tyranny, but I'm going to do a piece next week or something with it because it's a 10-year-old film. came out right after 9-11, and it's footage that I was sent by police and, and, and defendants and others. But I have FEMA in Kansas City saying George Washington, Thomas Jefferson are terrorists, America's bad, all this. I mean, and you think you're watching a Monty Python movie. It's not a joke, though. You know, like an absurdist police state where they say breathing is evil, you know, and the police are there agreeing with it. And then I have sent to me months later, in an, th that was in um, Kansas City, from Virginia, Abby Newman, pulled over at a checkpoint. They want to search her. She says no. They grab her out. She doesn't resist. They charge her. And then they find a Harrison Ford video uh, she, she, she'd rented, and it was Patriot Games. The word Patriot freaks them out, and, and, and they don't even know what Harrison Ford is. I mean, it's like, it's like a joke. Like, it, it'd be funny if it wasn't. Like, you're watching this from their squad car as they dig through her trunk 10 feet away with mics on. And the guy and the supervisor's talking to him and they go, she's got a pocket constitution. And they're going, oh my gosh, this is horrible. I can't believe uh, she's got this. And they're like, is this legal? And they're going, oh, I can't believe, and they're acting, I mean, for me, that, that'd be like somebody who'd been in a North Korean brainwashing camp for 20 years, mm. who'd been tortured every time they were shown a constitution. I mean, how did they find these are like rednecks. How did they find men who are, I mean, I don't even believe this is real is what I'm saying. It's so alien that obviously they've sworn an oath to this. This is what America's based on. This is why we're supposedly special. And they're arrest some woman and a veteran, no rec, criminal record at a checkpoint because she has a constitution. I mean, and, and, and they have to have a debate about, is it allowed? I, I, I mean, for people that haven't seen the video, it's online, it's free everywhere, people get the DVD from us, it doesn't matter. The point is, is that uh, these, these guys are under mind control. How do, they, how do they get them to this point? Well, public school. I mean, look at the Occupy people. Look at the ignorance displayed there. Um, look at the, like Adam Kokish went out and interviewed some of those people and asked them basic questions. You know, they're, look at the stuff that Jane Leno does when he goes and talks to people on the street. They don't know who we fought in World War II. They don't know why we fought in World War II. They don't know, they're just ignorant of our, of our history. And this is the product of public schools. And so, yes, you have ignorant people, both in colleges. You have ignorant people in the Tea Party who support what McCain's doing right now. They support what Bush did when he's gutting the Constitution and wiping his with it and you have cops who are ignorant also it's it's a product of public schooling that's why we have an ignorant population yeah they that's don't know what the document is they don't know it's what they swore to and so they've been taught by the adl southern property law center we got the man that it's bad they tell them constitution cop killer cop killer that's what they tell them in the drills right. people that talk about the constitution want to murder you so they're like oh we found it i mean if it's still they they're that dumb well, that ignorant. I wouldn't say they're dumb. But they're yeah, they're ignorant. ignorant. You're right. They're just purely ignorant. Lacking in knowledge, right? Lacking in, and so that's the. This is this is why the truth is the answer. You know, it's an antidote. One drop of truth is an antidote to a whole bucket of nonsense. And so we have to keep spreading the truth. But the question is, is will we have time to reach them all, or will we run out of time? Last thing I want to do is 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 have to fight against people who think they're doing the right thing, but are doing the, exactly the wrong thing. And that would be really just a horrible, horrible um, future for us. 
Well, well, they're not just tasering and beating innocent people, though. They'll, they'll get them to start thinking a little bit. When, but, 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 you know, Stuart, looking at this, as you said, humans just repeat the same thing over and over again. And now it's happening here. Uh, I mean, it just goes to show that uh, if a bunch of wild frontiers people that were in constant wars were, were, were being bullied around by, by the Redcoats, What's going to happen to a bunch of fat, dumb, and happy people who think everything's fine? Of course crooks took over. Of course they're going to try to set up the worst tyranny possible. They've committed a lot of crimes. They've got to secure those crimes. If there's a peaceful revolution, they're all going to go to prison. That's why they want violence. That's why I think we should try to avert it at all cost. Well, uh, until the point is reached where you reach the Sultanism point, where you should have resisted and you should have fought back because you're going to wind up in a camp. And so I wouldn't say, you know, avoid it at all costs. I'd say it's the last option. Well, no, Just I'm like saying I'm saying at all costs up until defense. Sure, they're driving around in black trucks grabbing the Patriots. I mean, you know, well, obviously there's no... And here's the point I want to make to John McCain and, and the rest of them. Um, it's a two-way street. What you're doing is sticking your arm down a badger hole because when you strip away the protections of the Bill of Rights from the American people, like you said earlier, Alex, there's a 30 percent of, of the population who is awake and aware, and they're not going to wait for you to just come get them in the middle of the night. They're going to consider you, John McCain and, and Senator Levin and the rest of you, they're going to consider you to be what you consider them, a, a military enemy. And so you're, if you open that door and leave them no protection, no security, no, no, no knowing that they have a, a chance to face their accusers in a trial before a jury of their peers, if you strip that away, what you're really stripping away is is a last reason they have to hold back. You, you've given them no recourse. And that's what I worry about is that more, you know, when they reach that point, it's going to open that door and we will be shoved through and have no choice. Well, the reason you're right is I've had to think about this. And at the moment, they're going around like the NKVD grabbing families and stuff. I mean, you don't have a choice. And, and then you don't just wait and, 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 and deal with the stupid steroid thugs that come, you know, it's the criminals giving the orders that have to be brought to justice. Well, that's what what's rule will be. I mean, I mean, King George was across the seas. Um, the current crop of would-be tyrants is in Washington, D.C. They're on our own soil. And so in that sense, it'll be a little bit different. Um, I don't want to say much more than that, but uh, but the point is, is that they're opening a door that it goes both ways. If they're going to treat the American people like an occupied, conquered civilian population like Iraq or Afghanistan, then the American people will treat them like occupiers. They will treat them like military foreign occupiers. They will be treated the same. Well. That is what's happening. I mean, they are saying we're occupied by NORTHCOM, we're the enemy, and as Lindsey Graham said, yes, U.S. citizens are targeted, and America's a battleground. And he's this little, I don't even want to say effeminate, because women aren't weak like that, this little nelly, pasty creature. But then McCain is actually a veteran and has been under the Viet Cong tyranny. I mean, to watch him, he really is a piece of trash. He is. Whatever, I mean, he's long ago abdicated any, 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 he doesn't deserve any respect at all whatsoever for anything he did in service because he's betrayed his oath. Um, I, I consider him a traitor. And like I said, I don't use that term lightly. He should be tried for treason and then suffer the sentence. Well, it, it is treason to overthrow habeas corpus, <coughs> everything. I mean, this is the hallmark of a tyranny. Last question. This is the last, because we're at 45 minutes right now. And I know you're busy and we've got, uh, some financial news coming up as well. Talking to the members and the folks that are involved with Oath Keepers, the police, the military that you talk to, what is their sense of what's going on? Um, most of them that I talk to are concerned that we are in the last breath before the, before the plunge. Um, quite a few of them are concerned that that's, that's where we are. We're on the edge of the chasm. And, and they're very concerned that we're going to cross and have no recourse but to do the same as our founding fathers. And, and they don't want to do it. Uh, they, they don't want it. 
but they, that's what they that's what they feel. I talked to them across the country, and they're just. Ext- I mean, look at this. I mean, this is you know, some part of Lawson are trying to say we're all conspiracy theorists. This is this is. I, I encourage everybody to go read my paper and then go look at what's happened since. I wrote that in 2004. I predicted what's happening now. It's legal. It's right there in your face in Supreme Court cases. It's right there in bills in front of Congress. You know, the president is doing it. He's executing American citizens with, with his own secret list. It's happening. And you are in exactly the same place that the founders were in 1775. That is where we are. And, and people understand that. I think, I think more and more Americans are starting to realize that. Now, the difficult question is, is then what do we do? How do we proceed? How do we stay moral? How do we stay in keeping with our oaths? And yet also defend liberty. How do we do that when the government itself has become the enemy? And, and I think the answer has to be in state sovereignty. And, and that's what the founders did. When the government that was over them was so illegitimate that they separated from it, that it, 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 they, it, was, it was destroyed, that they destroyed the British Constitution. It was gone. They resorted back to being sovereign states. And then they erected a new government the Articles of Confederation, and then our Constitution. So I think the same thing has to happen here. If the federal government declares war on the American people in this dang bill, we should say, okay, fine, you have destroyed the Constitution, you have destroyed the compact, we are now, again, sovereign states, we will stand on our state sovereignty, the military should then put their loyalty to the governors of the states, not to the president. Well, by the way, they saw that four years ago in the John Warner Defense Authorization Act. It had language in it about the state governors, if they were insurrection, or the populations, and how they were going to make a 10-region governor deal, which they've now done. So the system is, is now war, is even wargamed all this out. Then the mega banks that took over the federal government has actually wargamed how to conquer us. But again, this is by people that make 40 to 1 bets with their own, with people's private accounts. I mean, they're nuts. I mean, they're crazy like a fox, but still they're nuts. Well, they still have that Achilles heel. The weakness still is that they're relying upon U.S. servicemen and women to obey their orders. And yeah. if we can show them yeah. the proper course, which is to put their allegiance at the – I mean, if the federal government – you know, destroys the Constitution completely, which is which, which it almost is right now, then they should put their loyalty. I don't want to say military coup. That would be very dangerous. They should put their loyalty to the states. Just like Washington never established himself as the new king, he was subordinate and, and obedient to the Revolutionary Congress. That's who he obeyed the orders of. Always the military was subservient to the civil power. The same thing will have to happen. Even in the midst of a revolution, the military must not take upon itself the power to, to govern the people. They must be subordinate to, you know, at least the civilian leadership. Amazing. Leadership. All right, Stuart Rose, OathKeeper.org. We'll be talking to you more in the future as they try to pass torture bills, secret arrest bills. We need to really get a hold of the Senate right now, though. There's been so many psyops. First, they said this wasn't in there. Then, no, oh, we've passed it, but they hadn't. They're really pulling out the stops to try to get this. And we need to contact the Senate and, and, and let them know that we're aware of their criminal activity and that uh, everybody's going to campaign against them and speak out against them uh, and more. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you, Alex. Wow. Folks, uh, they're moving to censor the Internet in a hundred different ways. We've covered it. We've talked about it. Uh, they're moving to try to shut down domains for no reason. Internet kill switches, all of that. Uh, because these criminals know they're in trouble. And that's what's so dangerous about them, is that they've committed so many crimes and, and, and given energy companies a half billion bucks that they knew they never used and guns to Mexico and everything. That Think of what they'll do next. I'll tell you, it's going to be stage terror blamed on uh, domestic groups. So that's why I say never offensive violence, because they need that, they use that to look like the victim as an excuse to attack the public. Um, I almost go with the Gandhi view at the first phases that imagine if they blow up and burn down some more churches, how that'll, how that'll boomerang against them. But I understand it's immoral to let them do that. Uh, it's just that from a psychological warfare position using the truth, I see about taking more of their abuse as really discrediting them. And next time I talk to Stuart, we'll talk about that. I mean, it's a, it's a wider debate. Or is that a cowardly delusion? Well, it's not a cowardly delusion, or we wouldn't even be here talking about this. We'd be here serving the evil and, and uh, cuddling up to it. It's just that once the genie's out of the bottle, uh, these globalists are going to sit offshore while the American people kill each other. I want to try to avert 
violence as long as we can, and I, and, and, and I want to avert the globalist staging events uh, like they've done to try to demonize those of us that are awake to their criminal activity. So we've got to be, what is it, wise as serpents and peaceful as doves. But, uh, and again, like you said with the Solzhenitsyn situation, you cannot let them drag you and your family off to the FEMA camp when you've done nothing wrong. Uh, I mean, they're trying to train you now to pepper spray in the face and taser you to death and beat you in the head for no reason. And they now say that even if the, if the baton bounces off your head, that's a form of assault. I'm serious. You're not allowed to cover your face when they're kicking you. That's assault. I mean, it's becoming sick. And, uh, you know, these cops and people will be judged by having their future destroyed by the globalist. But still, that's not enough. We'd rather wake them up. And we'll try. We'll try. Uh, but uh, this, this corruption is just is, is surpassing all reason. We're going to come back with another interview in this extended edition of InfoWars Nightly News, PrisonPlanet.tv. You are living history right now, ladies and gentlemen. Don't say you weren't warned. If you believe in this information and want to support its viral spread, go to the InfoWars store at InfoWars.com. We've got the new G.I. Joe InfoWars t-shirts. We've got the incredible pro-pure gravity-fed filters available at InfoWars.com in the store. We've got a new DVD, Sign Us Under Attack, the Don't Tread on Me flag. We've got all sorts of different bumper stickers to help spread the rebellion virally. It's all there. Wristbands, citizen rule books in every order. Order online at InfoWars.com today. The water filters, the canteens, it's all there. InfoWars.com. Oh yes, you found it. The literal front line in the info war. The true alternative media that is endangering to extinct the dinosaur, corporate, lying, deceiving, teleprompter media. This is teleprompter free news. Thank you for joining us. Well, you saw Stuart Rhodes break down the awful truth about the police state surpassing even my imagination with how quickly it's moving. Um, what we laid out previously, it turns out, is uh, pale compared to the nakedness of the tyranny uh, that we now see uh, pouring into our society at uh, every turn. And we've broken down a lot of the incredible financial news that's out there. Like I mentioned in the news segment, Henry Paulson gave hedge funds inside information on Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae when he was Treasury Secretary. Totally illegal. But... Corzine's invested with the head of the CFTC. Billions of dollars of people's private accounts are missing. You see, it's a new era of corruption where they throw it right in our face because they've gotten the crooks in every regulatory position. Now, a lot of you that listen to the syndicated radio show here once a week or so, Ted Anderson, who's the owner of the Genesis Radio Network, but he also got into radio because he was sponsoring radio, owning Midas Resources, now the fifth largest gold and silver uh, broker in the country. And Ted's been a sponsor of mine for almost 16 years now, e even before I was on his Genesis Network, when I was just on local radio here. And sometimes you hear Ted on promoting gold and silver on the show, which has been a good investment. I only promote things that I believe in. Gold has uh, five, six times what it was 10 years ago. Silver almost eight times. Silver $5, now 30 plus. Gold, 260 something dollars now, 1800 but that, Ted's not here today to tell you about gold and silver you can get from Midas Resources. Ted is here to give us his 30 plus years studying markets on what he sees happening in the world today. So we're gonna to talk to him uh, about the type of climate we're in, the numbers coming in that only confirm this depression is a depression, has been a depression for a very long time. Ted Anderson, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me up, Alex. And boy, what a, what a roller coaster ride that we have been on. My goodness. Uh, yeah, you're right about that. Right now, the times are tough. Uh, investors are having a really difficult time to try to make decisions of where they can go for safety. Uh, there was an interview with Mikhail Prokhorov. Uh, I think I'm probably butchering that name. It's a, it's a billionaire over in uh, the Soviet Union. And he was asked, he says, what would you uh, invest in? Uh, would it be, uh, um, would it be uh, treasuries, U.S. treasuries? Uh, bars of gold or top-tier Picassos, and he said clearly 
gold bars. He says people would be better off investing in Finland and their debt because they're less likely to try to inflate away their debt problems. The United States is in a, is in a quandary. We can't hardly afford our, afford our own government and our own bills, and now we're stepping in to bail out Europe. Uh, obviously, that's going to not bode very well for the United States dollar at all. Well, Ted, I mean, it's come out that the Federal Reserve private shareholders also own the European Central Bank. So the Federal Reserve is bailing out its other hand. Uh, we need to discuss, though, the body and the head and the brain of this system. It is the new world order. Uh, you know, we talk about world government, banking collapses, bringing in the world government. Now we're seeing it in Europe. What do you, what do you make of open announcements that uh, they're going to get rid of any uh, self-determination of the nations of Europe and that it's going to be a, quote, Goldman Sachs dictatorship and our media is saying, wow, this is great. Uh, the Economist is talking about how great it is. Wow, it's great to be ruled by corrupt banks that sold the fraud that caused all this. Gee, isn't it great? Isn't it great to get, you know, run over by a Mack truck, Ted? Well, we're already seeing that right now, Alex, because the President of the United States, who, of whom we voted in to be our leader, was saying that he was not going to use U.S. dollars to bail out the uh, European banks. And the very next day, the Federal Reserve steps in and does it anyways. I, I heard, uh, you know, I keep hearing talk about the Federal Reserve being the second most powerful institution in the United States just behind the Supreme Court. I don't think that that's true. I don't think the Supreme Court has the power that the Fed does right now. And obviously with the Fed and their member branches and their elites doing things that are above and beyond the law, and the Supreme Court not stepping in to try to stop them is, is proof in, in, in that the fact that the Fed is actually the controlling factor here. Sure, and it's about as federal as Federal Express or Federal Ammunition or Federal Toilet Cleaners. Uh, but Ted, uh, continuing to uh, look at this situation, have they gone a step too far? I mean, the globalists have gotten into global power because they are hubris, hubris filled, they are very reckless. They are very cunning. They, they are willing to really go for broke. An example is Corzine, the president's top uh, fiscal advisor, going, betting 40 to 1 on European bonds with people's private accounts. Um, I mean, now, though, the, I mean, they're so criminal out in the open. Have they gone too far, Ted? Well, I think they've gone way too far, Alex. I mean, they have way too much control. They should be reined in, and actually, we should get rid of the Fed and get back to what constitutional, uh, constitutional money, what the Constitution calls for, because of the fact that they have been able to buy off our politicians and, uh, and have legislation created specifically just for them to give them more power. I mean, when you hear the, the president trying to turn over more power to the Fed, uh, that's just because they are bought off. That's where the, uh, the, the, the lubricant comes for all these. Well, sure, Ted. I mean, just to clarify my question, though, and I, I mean, I like your answer to the, to, to the other question, but I'm saying, of course, they've gone too far. I'm saying, have they gone too far to get away with it, even with a brain-dead population? Well, I, the population is waking up. However, the majority is still brain dead. I think they can go even further. But are they off the edge of the cliff? Can they recover? Can they come back? I don't think so. I think the United States dollar is doomed. We're way too far into this thing. We've got way too much debt. The only way that they can seem to solve problems nowadays is by turning on the printing press and making more money, which causes more inflation, which allows, you know, they, they lose power when that happens. Because if the Federal Reserve System's money is worthless, nobody's going to turn to it as a reserve currency. They're going to turn their nose up to it, just like they do in Zambia and the, like they did in the, the South America, like Argentina, Brazil. Mexico is the same thing. The, the, the further away they go, but we, they are leading us right into a, a world-type currency, a world-run a world uh, currency system, and that's where you're seeing it right now is the Fed stepping in and bailing out the, the, the banks of Europe. And that's, that's really just a bailout for their buddies. That's so their investments don't have to take the hit. Uh, you're talking about Corzine and his deals. Well, why wouldn't you invest in risky investments if you know the government's going to step in and bail them out? And when I say government, I mean quasi-government. The Fed is going to step in and do whatever it takes in order to help their buddies out. But for us people out here, those small fry, we're dead. I mean, we're the ones that are going to take the hit. It's just like taking money right out of our savings accounts. Ted, we know that uh, Hank Paulson, the head of the Treasury Department in 2008, gave himself bailout money and he but it's okay because he gave himself a waiver i mean you know, the fox gave himself a waiver to eat chickens in the hen house 
Maybe it'd be okay if Hitler gave himself a waiver. There wouldn't even need to be a Nuremberg. He's like, hey, I've got a waiver right here. Uh, well, now, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the, the Daily Mail reports, Hank Paulson gave hedge fund inside information on Franny, uh, Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae when he was Treasury Secretary so that they could basically make big profits off of it while screwing the public. I mean, again, this stuff comes out, and in the past, this guy would go to jail. Now it's like, hey, it's all right. Yeah, he should go to jail for that. I mean, insider trading uh, is insider trading. I don't care if it comes from a government official or if it comes from Bernie Madoff. I mean, yeah, obviously the man should be in, incarcerated and, and charged with this crime. But, you know, he's not going to be. We know that. And, uh, and, and that's, again, if you're well enough connected, you're going to be able to get, way, get away with this type of thing. Uh, for the average person, it's just simply not true. He did. He was able to get himself out of trouble. They wrote into that particular, in, during the TARP bailout, that these companies or these people could, be, could get away from, or they're above and beyond the law. They couldn't be prosecuted for these types of crimes, and uh, it, though they should be. I mean, for goodness sakes, the Fed was, uh, th they're talking about $700 billion to be uh, injected into the economy, bailing out these banks. Well, guess what? The Treasury uh, put out that $700 billion, but at the same time, the Fed was putting out $7.7 .7 trillion. And, you know, it's such a larger sum, and at, at that time, it was all done in secret. And by the and, way, I have a screenshot of that, Ted. Folks want to show a document cam to the viewers from Forbes. Why did we know about the Fed's 7.7 .7 trillion? And then, of course, there's also uh, the uh, other reports uh, that are out there dealing with the 16 plus trill. I mean, this is incredible. And then they want us to pay all this back in taxes. We give them bailouts, and then the system comes back to us and then we have to pay them interest on the bailout that we gave them. Yeah, that's that's the that's the whole problem with the issue. It, it all it all falls in the lap of the US citizen. I mean, w we shouldn't stand for this. There should be revolting in the streets over this. I mean, Occupy Wall Street if they if they had a clue as to what's going on, they would go right after this and 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 the people really should be up in arms with this whole thing, but they're not because, again, maybe 10% of the people have an idea, a clue of what's going on. And so that's how they get away with this. And they pass these laws. They, they shouldn't be able to. They go be above and beyond the law. That's why I say the, uh, the uh, um, Supreme Court it does not have more power than the Fed. The Fed has the power. We've handed this nation over to a bunch of elite you know, money-producing banking people. I mean, it, it, it's happened in nations again and again. And we've had 100 years of a fiat-type system, and they're able to use a printing press to buy out our politicians. It's no surprise that we're in the position that we are. But you know what? At the end of it, when it all comes down, the United States dollar is going to be in the ashes, and, uh, and the people are going to be standing in the bread lines. It's just it's sad to watch it go this direction, but that's what's going on. The, the Is there any way to pull out of it now with the people that are driving the bus? Because uh, you know, one sign that they know they're going to globally devalue all the major currencies is the gear up of the police state, the preparation for collapse, uh, the uh, system uh, acting so incredibly uh, brazen. I mean, they're snatching everything that's even nailed down right now as they all basically prepare for the crash themselves. Well, I mean, Alex, when the FOMC voted, when they met and they voted on this, whether, they, whether they're going to bail out Europe or not, there was only one central banker that voted against this, and he's not even a member. He was standing in. Uh, the, the, the reason why, one against nine. I mean, I don't think that we have the willpower, the political willpower, to stand up to these people. However, yes, there is a way to stop this. Stop bailing out the, the Wall Street banks. Stop bailing out Europe. Let the crash occur. You know, re reorganize, allow, allow prices to float freely in the marketplace. And yeah, it would be painful, but then we'll be back to something that's real. Now, can we get away from the Federal Reserve System? Can we get away from fiat money with this? Uh, political body that we have? I doubt it. You know, what do you have? I mean, we have about 8 and 10 percent people supporting the message of Ron Paul. Th this is his message. Hey, let's get back to uh, solid money and let's get away from this fiat system. You know, the people, they, they don't understand it.
they don't know what's eating them alive, what's eating out the very substance. You know, this is what the forefathers wrote, wrote about when they, when they uh, uh, declared, when they wrote the Declaration of Independence. But what's sick, Ted, you're right, is that it's premeditated. I mean, the very groups that engineered it are now announcing a global government with no laws for them, total laws on us. I mean, it's just too rich. And they wouldn't be making this move if they didn't think the public was ignorant on the facts. And that's why our work and Ron Paul's work has been so important. Yeah, I, I agree with that, Alex, and and that's the whole thing. Uh, the you know these people live on this. They want to they want to control the market. It's their business. They want to set up a uh, a cartel and and to be able to control the market. And the more control they can get, the more they'll push for. So that's you can just conclude that the reason why they want to have a world government is because they can tap into the resources of the entire world. I, the Federal Reserve System was able to tap into the resources of the United States. Now, a world government will allow you to be able to tax away and, uh, and inflate away the value of all, everybody's labor across the entire That's world. That's right. These globalists don't just want to steal a large percentage of the public's money. They wage war against real free market companies, individual liberty, private farmland, real money, and they want to make everybody debt slaves, and their ideology is eugenics which is forced population reduction. I mean, it could not be a worse scenario, but when you study history, the worst of the worst, when you get a tyranny, get into power. And so that's why it is the worst possible uh, scenario. My God, it's amazing. Uh, Ted, in closing, looking at silver and gold, uh, gold went up some today on this announcement of more uh, devaluation of the currencies. Where do you expect to see silver and gold right now? And what is it like in the physical market? Because I see these reports that Paper gold, they try to artificially deflate, but that in real world markets, there's a higher premium on gold and silver and other precious metals than even what the so called paper value is. Well, you're right about that. I mean, they did tame the market a little bit when they raised the reserve requirements or the, the deposit requirements on futures contracts. I mean, they doubled it. If you were, if you were putting $10,000 into a contract, now you had to put 20 in. Uh, that did soften the marketplace this summer. However, it's coming back right now. Gold is up 30 bucks. We've seen it at 17.52.10. I hear a lot of uh, analysts saying that we'll see gold over 2,000. Uh, silver could easily hit that $40 an ounce again. We're right now at 33.05. Um, the the main thing is is that as you see devaluation in the currency, as you see more tarp type bailouts like we have. I mean, it, and this is much greater, much bigger than what we had here back in 2008. Uh, it, it is going to cause the dollar to lose value, and gold and silver is going to reflect that. Gold and silver has been money for 6,000 years. You can't turn on the printing press uh, and devaluate the value of the currency without watching gold and so, silver rise. It, it, it has a very good way of uh, sniffing out any kind of uh, chicanery that's going on in the uh, currency markets. When you see money being printed, gold and silver is going to reflect that. You'll see rising prices. Obama is incredibly unpopular right now. But look at who the system is putting forward. Newt Gingrich, I mean, Mr. New World Order, NAFTA, GATT, carbon taxes, one world government, end of the family. I mean, he is a super creepy New Age or New World Order guy. Uh, on record, I mean, he's he's super creepy, and mainline conservatives are so conned by the lying talk show hosts that tell him he's Mr. Conservative. And Newt was out today saying, "I'm the real conservative. You aren't, Mitt Romney." And then you look at Mitt Romney; it's he, he's bad on all the issues. He uh, he's not part of the futurist society that Ginnerich is in, saying you know, end America. But he's doing it by his actions. I mean, these guys are horrible. Yeah, you're right about that. They're both bought and paid for. We know that. If, you might as well have Barack Obama in there because it isn't going to make a difference. You put either one of those guys uh, in the in the ring, and and they're going to just follow along with a new flavor of the Kool Aid. Basically, it's still going to be poisonous. It's just a new flavor. Those guys are going to mean absolutely nothing for our liberty and our freedom, and to be able to have a solid base of currency that we can rely on. Well, I agree. You know, the good news is, even if they wreck this whole thing and it does go over the edge of the cliff, we've been here telling people the truth. More folks are waking up. Look at Ron Paul. He's probably getting five times or more the attention and, and the votes right now in the polls. Looks like he could win Iowa. He, he was number two, now number three in New Hampshire because the media is saying, you know, Newt Gingrich is the savior. Uh, but if they gave him a fair shake, he'd be our next president. And he foresaw it. He's a constitutionalist. He's a true scholar. He, God's giving us the opportunity 
you know, to have a way out. And God always does that. The question is, will this nation, this modern Sodom and Gomorrah, take that out? Will we repent? Well, I tell you, Alex, we'll have to fight really hard to get them in that office. There's no question about it. It's an uphill battle. And uh, it would be short of a miracle to have him there as the president. But hopefully that happens. I'm with you on that one. But at least he's here injecting real issues. Yeah, I agree with you. Even if he doesn't get in there, uh, as this thing melts apart, and we see it, more people jump on the bandwagon on his ideals and ideas. Um, that yeah, I gonna... see it as the Alamo. You know, privately, the first time he ran, the second time, I said, listen, you know you're going to run because it's going to educate people. You're going to be in the debates. And, and, and now look how the liberty movement's grown, centered around Ron Paul as a fulcrum in the last four years. And it'll be like the Alamo. Even if he loses through all their cheating and 89 seconds in the debates, the next guy gets 10 minutes or whatever, through all that, he's kind of like the Alamo. You know, it's, it's that will to fight. Resistance is victory. Even if Ron Paul becomes an Alamo and, and, and he gets wiped out politically and beaten and we get beaten, people shouldn't get mad. And I'm not saying that's happened yet. By fighting, we win, because think of all the seeds we're planting right now when everything we say has come true. We're already getting a lot of credibility because so much has come true. Imagine when it really all happens. Ted, I mean, we're really planting time bombs here. You know that, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it's, there's no question about it. The, uh, the, um, the amount of power that has, come, that has grown uh, from the grassroots behind this message uh, you know, like your Ron Paul, you're talking about, and the uh, and the solid currency and getting out of these. Or my that... radio show, or all the other shows you syndicate, and, and, and you listen to mainline talk radio. More and more, they try to sound like me. They do. Uh, and, uh, again, we are forcing the debate more and more towards reality. And and they know it, Alex. I mean, you've your your web presence and your and your terrestrial radio presence and everything that. It, 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 it's grown by leaps and bounds. It's getting stronger as time goes on. And uh, you know that, that, that the uh, elitists are just going to destroy this country. And as they do it, people are going to become more angry. And they're going to be looking for answers. And they're going to find it right here. Well, that's it. That's why I say we're time bombs. We tried to fix it. We tried to stop it. But the more what we say happens, unfortunately, we're kind of crying here. Uh, but, but at the same time, it, it's better to still be sad and see the bad things happen, but at least more and more we're going to be in a position to beat these people. Ted Anderson with MidasResources.com. Folks can also find out more at GCNLive.com. Incredible news articles, audio, podcast, everything with all the great shows that are up there. GCNLive.com. Ted Anderson, thank you so much. Thanks for having me up, Alex. All right, amazing interview. Nice uh, banter back and forth with Ted and I. That's it for InfoWars Nightly News. I want to thank the crew. I want to thank Stuart Rhodes. I want to thank my family for letting me be here and not spend a lot of time with them. I want to thank God. I, I wouldn't be here uh, without God's support and protection. Believe me, I, I don't just know that. I rely on it. We don't just believe in miracles. We rely on them. That's a bumper sticker one of my aunts has. And uh, it's true. This is something special we're doing. And I want all of you to remember out there watching. What well, you're doing special, spreading the word about this show, doing your own podcast, sending links out, talking to your neighbors, going to city council meetings. Every little bit you do adds up. Many hands make light work. And it's not our fault all this is happening. You know, over the years, people get mad and say, you know, you people are discrediting the government. You'll make things collapse. Our government got taken over a long time ago. We know their plan is to destroy and consolidate this nation like some company, some corporate looter takes over. That's what the New World Order is. We know we got to tell people the hard truths, to have, like Patrick Henry said, and make preparation for it or there's no future. Okay, folks? And I get chills thinking about this. I mean, they, they're passing laws to secretly arrest and torture and kill whoever, citizens. I, I mean, Hitler didn't put stuff like that on paper. They're, it's all happening. But our ancestors went through this over and over again. That's why the founders, who weren't perfect but were heads above anybody else, foresaw that, tried to create a system to protect us. And we, we gave up on that system, a lot of us as Americans, and thought, oh, that's old and quaint. It was really a new revolutionary idea people fought and died for. And now that shield has been lowered, and we are, we are experiencing the evil of the New World Order. And we're only experiencing the light wind. You ever, you ever been outside 
and, and you're doing something, you're cleaning out your car, you're doing the yard or whatever, or you're on the back porch or whatever, and you, whoosh, you kind of see the trees moving, whoosh, and you walk out, it kind of feels good, and you kind of go out in the street so you can see down the road, and you see some big clouds, and five minutes later, windows are breaking, and a tornado is coming down the street throwing cars around. If you never grew up seeing that, I saw that once in Dallas, and we got blown off the road by a tornado once, but the point is, is that that's how it is. Is We're like, hey, a storm's coming. We got radar. We got historical radar, and we've studied the globalist documents. They're planning to bring in this tyranny. People are like, it's a blue sky out here. It's like before the invention of radar. They're like, shut up, kook. There's no clouds. You can see 20 miles. And we're like, no, no, there's a hurricane coming in on shore. 20 miles over there. It, you know, It'll be here in like six, seven hours. You better get ready. They're like, ah, oh. yeah, you claim you've got radar. Sure you do. Radar schmadar. We have historical radar. Those that don't know history are doomed to repeat it. So we were telling you, some people 20, 30 years ago as they saw the erosion of liberty, some even more. But now as it got more and more clear, in the last 17 years, I've been warning you. And now, and now it's black clouds rolling in. The winds are about 50 miles an hour. That hurricane's got 200 mile an hour winds, folks. It's 50 right now. A few signs are blowing over. Some tree branches are breaking. People are going, wow, there's rain coming down sideways. You said a storm was coming. We're like, yeah, it's a 200 mile an hour. And a lot of people haven't built shelters. A lot of people haven't gotten ready. And a lot of these people are dangerous. A lot of people that serve the system are going to get more servile as things get worse. They're not going to wake up. They're going to get more into worshiping the system. It's those of us that are awake that have got to band together now for strength. They got to stick together, and they start trying to arrest people and round folks up and do all of this. Uh, we're trying to fix things peacefully, but as this government goes like the Soviets or Nazi Germany, we have a right to defend our families and ourselves. And you know, I don't just shoot my mouth off about stuff. It's just that when you see these type of tyrannies unfolding, we do have to make preparations to defend ourselves as well. There's no doubt we tried to turn things back earlier. But uh, people need to understand that the republic has been taken over by pure criminals. No one can deny that. We want to fix things peacefully, uh, but we do have a right to defensively uh, defend ourselves, hence the word defense. All right, uh, that's it for InfoWars Nightly News. We've got a day or two left of the 15-day free trial at PrisonPlanet.tv for this and all the films and more. And then those of you that pay it forward and support us, you help everybody out there online that watches it for free. God bless you all. We'll see you hopefully uh, back tomorrow night, 7 o'clock Central.